Hello friends, it's the Sailor Rider here. I had some people that were interested in knowing how to rig and de-rig a Windrider 17, so I thought I would bring you along and show you how I do it. Here I am arriving at my favorite boat ramp. It happens to be at, uh, those of you in Southwest Florida, at the uh, Charlotte uh, Beach Park. It's one of the best ramps around the area. Uh, here I am uh, uh, getting ready to step the mast and getting everything ready to go. It's important to remember that boat ramps are busy places. Uh, find a place out of the way and so you don't impede traffic. You don't want to take up the boat ramp for any longer than you have to. Uh, be aware of uh, any power lines that are ahead and uh, just be careful. It can be safe boating is no accident. At this point, I have taken the mast out of the, the cradle and uh, slid it onto the, the rotator ball and am hooking the shackle up that connects the shrouds to the, uh, the mast. This takes a few minutes and i got to get it untangled and laid out and ready to raise the mast. It's very important to make sure you get everything laid out and make sure that nothing is going to get snagged on the way up because it's uh, kind of a pain in the butt if that happens. The next thing that needs done is you need to slide the almas out. Uh, I usually don't use the tramp so it just uh, eliminates the step. I, I use the tramps if I'm taking people with me or if uh, I'm carrying a, a bunch of material with me like if I'm going camping or, or something like that but or, ordinarily just for a day sale and for just me I do not use the tramps. You need to make sure the locking pins are securely in place and locked. Um, I notice with mine sometimes they get they get a little sprung and you can bend the the retaining clip back a little bit if 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 yours are getting loose on you but you for sure want to make sure they don't come out. You do not need to uh, use the, the uh, locking pin around the ball, uh, the pivot ball, using the system I'm using, uh, but you do need to connect all four uh, shrouds. Uh, remember the short ones go uh, towards the front of the boat and the longer ones to the back and you need to make sure they're all pin securely. I use the, the uh, vinyl to slide down over them to keep them locked in place. Had one of them come off one day that was not a, a pleasant experience so 
do everything you can to make sure you don't have a problem later. I use the boat winch to raise the mast with. I've replaced the wire rope with some good, uh, strong, non-stretch uh, uh, sailing rope. And uh, uh, I use a little uh, uh, riser on the uh, uh, post that holds the, uh, the winch to get, get my uh, lift point up a little bit higher and run the winch up through that. Here I'm pulling the, the uh, line out to hook to a uh, lifting uh, bale that I have attached to the, uh, the bridle. Once everything is connected, I tighten it up and do another quick walk around to make sure no lines are fouled, no shrouds are under anything, and uh, the mast has got a free path home. Once the forestay is attached, I'm good to go. The mast is secure and I can finish rigging the, the sheets and uh, getting the boat ready to go into the water. When I got the boat about 10 years ago, I was also 10 years uh, had 10 years less use on my old bones and I discovered that bringing my little six foot step ladder made life a lot easier. I just don't climb up and down off of that deck as easily as I once did. I have a bungee cord attached to the mast and uh, what the bungee cord does is you take the ends of it and hook it into where your uh, front points for your uh, uh, trampoline are and what that does is keeps your jib sheets from fouling whenever you attack and I think that came with the boat but I also run that up through my my lifting uh, bale that I've attached and, and uh, that holds that down and keeps it from flopping around and, and getting tangled up. Next, we're going to hook the jib sheets up. They go around uh, the outside of the bungees that I was talking about earlier and to the inside of the shrouds and then back through the, the jam cleats uh, and with a nice little stopper knot in them. Next thing I always do is I run my jib out and make sure the furling mechanism works, everything is working smoothly and nothing is tangled. I've learned the hard way, it's a lot easier to do this on the trailer than it is out on the water.
The next thing I do is lay the main out. I don't raise the main on the trailer, but I get it laid out with the with the gooseneck facing forward and uh, where I can easily uh, raise it when I get the boat in the water. Always check out your boat ramps before you try and use them and make sure you have a clear path from where you're going to rig the boat to where you're going to launch it. I heard too many sad stories about people finding power lines with masks. You know, it's not, not worth it. Uh, check it out first and make sure that you have a good place to go. Also be aware that now the boat has got the, the amas out and it's, you know, it's uh, probably 15, 14, 15 foot wide. Uh, you don't want to hook any bicyclists or, or uh, snag anything. So take your time and, and get down to the ramp and just be careful. The last thing I do is uh, get my boat hook ready and make sure my painter is attached to the front of the boat. One thing you do not do, do not disconnect the boat from the trailer until you're in the water. It's, uh, it doesn't take much for that boat to slide off of those two rails. So uh, don't unhook it until the boat is in the water and you're, you're ready for it to come off because uh, believe me, uh, it's, it's a bad day if you drop the boat on the ramp. People get very impatient with stuff like that and it's also quite expensive to repair. <laughs> This is where it really helps if you got a buddy that wants to go sailing. Uh, one of you can drive the boat off of the trailer using the trolling motor and go over the, around to the beach and uh, wait for the other one to park the truck and trailer. But doing it by yourself is a, a little more difficult. Uh, basically, I just have to tie the boat off to the dock and go park the truck and come back.
I am 6'4 and about 200 and some odd pounds, shall we say. And I found the easiest way to board a Windrider 17 is, is either step onto the bow or onto one of the catwalks near the front. It, it just seems a whole lot more stable and a whole lot easier to get, on, get aboard. After properly breaking in my new straw hat, uh, we're on our way. Sorry people, I know my car warranty is expired, but I just don't have time to talk to you right now. This is why I love this ramp. It's got two lanes, uh, it drops off nicely, never had a problem getting the boat off the trailer. And on either side there's a beach, one kind of facing uh, uh, northwest and one uh, facing uh, uh, southwest. And it's, uh, Usually works out pretty good. I can put the, the nose of the boat up on the beach and put my mainsail up and, and uh, back out and catch the wind and go. I leave my mainsail rolled up around my boom. It's, it's worked very well. I mean, I take it off and clean it from time to time. It's also rigged with a reefing line, so I can reef it if I if I need to reef it. Uh, but it comes up pretty easy. Just kind of roll it out there. And uh, one thing you want to adjust before you, you you get out is adjust your outhaul. If the wind is light, you want it fairly loose. If you got heavier wind, you want to tighten it up a little bit. Uh, I always release it when I come back in so that uh, it's easier to raise the, the sail. If you got the outhaul pulled out too tight, sometimes it can be hard to get the sail in the track. So uh, you want to save the, uh, the outhaul for last. A quick push off with the boat hook and we're underway. The trolling motor will take us out as soon as uh, possible. I, uh, I uh, operate under sail. Uh, the trolling motor does nicely, but I came to sail, so away we go.
got the boat already on the trailer, I missed the, having the camera where I could record actually loading the boat. Basically, I backed the trailer in until the uh, uh, rail that the boat rides on, the, the back end is just right at the water water level. And then uh, generally with a boat hook, if I'm by myself, uh, I can uh, I can pull it around there and, and pull it, slide it up on the on the uh, trailer and uh, use the winch to, to, to pull it home and uh, we're ready to, ready to come out of the water. Once I have the boat on the trailer I generally try to get away from the ramp to free it up for others to use uh, but there again uh, please be aware of any power lines in the area. Uh, but I usually here is not a problem. Their utilities are all underground, but I know that's not always the case. So be careful about the watch, watch overhead. But if you can try and uh, stay out of other people's way, it's, it's good to be courteous. The first thing I put away are the jib sheets. They get wrapped uh, uh, around the, the uh, uh, sail and that kind of helps hold the sail on and keeps, keeps everything together. It's a little time consuming, but uh, take the time and wrap it neatly. It, it'll pay dividends when it's time to raise it back up. Next, I run the boat winch uh, or line through the the uh, riser there. You can see the uh, the pulley there on the top of the post, and hook it back to my uh, lifting bale and get ready to tighten it up so I can uh, lower the lower the uh, mast. I tighten the winch up till I see the seal get slack and I can take the, the uh, clevis out and release the uh, uh, front shroud and the uh, uh, jib sail. Once I've released the front shroud, uh, I'm ready to, to uh, lower the, the uh, uh, mast. The mast is a, on a, a little swivel ball and you have to kind of turn it around a little bit so the squared off uh, point can turn to the side a little bit otherwise it's liable to jump off of the ball and break something. So uh, I've got a, a little uh, uh, rotation limiter that I have on the bottom of it and I can reach it and grab it and pull it around a little bit and lower it with my other hand. If, you, if your arms aren't as long as mine, you might have to rig something uh, differently, but uh, come down as, as you know quickly as you can. You don't want to have that thing hanging around and make sure nobody's in the way. You know, things can break and we for sure don't want to hit anybody. Where I'm parked at, there is a potential of a vehicle coming past, so I, I went ahead and shoved the, the uh, traffic side AMA back in to make sure that uh, there was plenty of room for anybody to pass.
once I've disconnected the, the, the uh, bridle and pulled the, the shrouds all together, I kind of roll them up and uh, I have, uh, uh, I call it a snake bag, it's an old laundry bag and I can shove it in there and uh, keep it all together for next time. I attached the uh, boom uh, to the crutch using the uh, bungee cord that uh, keeps the, that I use to keep the uh, sheets out of the sail, and then I put it on the uh, back uh, uh, mast crutch and use the the uh, main sheet that uh, goes through the hole that holds the bridle, and I. I uh, Pull that tight and that holds in place has worked very well. Never had a, had any issue with it coming loose. Hey, thanks for coming along. Hope you enjoyed the ride. Uh, if you like it, please uh, like my video and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'll continue to post. Uh, have some trips coming up, and uh, we'll get those on as soon as I can. Uh, uh, fair winds.